This is my in-depth guide on installing an LCD to HDMI converter board into your stock arcade 1UP cabinet, specifically the Star Wars cab. So this is the particular model you want. The resolution is 1280 by 960. Make sure you get the right one because they sell several different models. This is everything that comes inside of this box. You got your main board, the control board here, and a ground screw and some instructions. These are some of the tools you're going to need to get it prepped. To install it into the cab, we're going to be mounting everything using double-sided tape. So we're also going to prep the box itself. So you can use any cardboard box or use the back of the box it actually came in. We're going to cut this out, mount it with some double-sided tape. We're going to add some double-sided tape to the back of this, as well as this, and get it prepped into the cabinet. Here's the back of your stock RK1 of Star Wars cab. So the PCB is here. You have all the original cables plugged into it, the marquee light, as well as the sound. Go ahead and tuck these away for right now. We're going to get to these later. Now we're going to use a regular Phillips screwdriver to unscrew the two sides here. So depending on the fit, you might have to pull this while you're unscrewing it for the screw to unlatch. So go ahead and pull this off and the other side as well. And here's what we have on the inside. So carefully pull this back and you can see everything's still plugged into here. Now that we have the PCB exposed, you can see these are the connectors that are still holding it down. So go ahead and unplug these, pry these carefully from the base out of the stock PCB. We're going to replug these back into our LCD converter in a minute. Just go ahead and pull these out. You can go ahead and take the stock PCB and cable, put it aside for right now, we won't be using it. There's also a ground screw connected to the monitor itself. Now we're not going to reuse this screw because inside of your converter board should have come with a nut and a bolt. This is going to make it easier to secure to the bolt. So go ahead and just unscrew this, put the screw aside, and then we're going to get it installed into the monitor converter. So the board, we're going to connect a couple of different things here, but the first thing I'm going to do is get this ground connected here. So I have my double-sided tape plugged everywhere except for these two exposed holes. You can choose either side to ground them. I'm going to ground it on this top left corner. So I'm going to take the bolt little screw that came with the converter board, stick it through the back, and then grab this, stick it on top, and then use the tiny nut to hold it down and then we're going to use a screwdriver to screw it in. So hold it from the back, grab your screwdriver, start screwing it in place. You could, if you needed to get some more leverage, use some of those needle nose pliers that I had in the video earlier, or you can kind of just hold it down. It should have enough friction to be able to get it down tight. So our ground wire is now installed. Next, grab this is the power to the board. So go ahead and unplug it into this side of the monitor converter. And the last thing to line up is this right here, the connector for the actual screen. So there's red cables here. Make sure the red cables are pointing to the left side of this board as you plug them in. Line up the pins correctly and carefully. You want to do this right and not have any pins off centered. Have it go in. And now that should be completely installed. So now we just need to mount this onto our cardboard piece that we had earlier. Go ahead and start trying to pull this out as much of the cable as you can and that'll give you an idea of exactly where you want to be able to place this on your board. A lot of folks like to do it below. Um, I have mine mounted on the top and I have a good reason for that because this, we can mount this and connect this to this cable right here, but you can mount this on the inside of your cab but you're not going to be able to get access to it. If you mount it on the top, this cable would be long enough for you to reach the top and actually have it mounted through the top of your board if you actually make a hole. So it's up to you where you want to mount it. You can just leave this on the inside. You don't really need to access this at all, but it is nice to be able to turn your monitor off and on at will if you want to. So I'm going to mount it to the top. The last thing is adding in the controller buttons for the LCD converter and this cable just plugs into the top part here. And as I mentioned, it's really up to you on where you want to mount this. This isn't really necessary to operate your um, your monitor. When you turn on the whole cabinet, the tower should turn on by itself, but this does allow you to ad hoc, turn things off and on, adjust some of the settings. So you can mount it on the inside of your cab, or if you want easy access to it, drill a hole through the top, and actually you can just layer this cable through it. So this red cable also comes out. You can put this through the hole in the top, mount this on the top of your cab, plug it back in. So for right now, I'm just going to mount it to the side using another piece of double-sided tape and cardboard just to put for right here for now. Now we need to get everything reconnected to the board. So in my first mod tutorial, I mentioned that this marquee LED is a little bit smaller than your standard 12-volt adapter, and I talked about how you can adapt this 
plug this into here, but you do have to splice some wires and cut this. If you don't want to do that, another option I did was I created a custom Y splitter that actually has a, um, a the right size 3.5 millimeter socket add it to this so that you can plug it directly in. So I custom created this. Normally this has to be male heads. I bought these sockets from Amazon, spliced this open, cut it, and then use some heat shrinking tube to connect it. And then this is going to power up my LCD monitor. This is going to power up my key. And the last one, I have a three-way splitter to power my LED buttons using a power wire harness. So once you get everything wired up here, you're going to be plugging the HDMI here. The last thing though, um, I can't recommend using just the stock soundboard here. Um, unfortunately, the stock speakers aren't powerful enough to be able to you know, play enough sound. There's not enough power coming from the board into the speakers. Um, you do hear sound, but it's very, very faint. So uh, in my original mod, I use some external speakers and an amp. Um, and I mounted them to the top of my cab. So I would recommend either getting PC speakers, putting them on the inside of your cab, or using the, the speaker replacements on the top and then getting an extra amp to be able to power your speakers. They just aren't powerful enough to draw enough power directly from the LC board. So you're gonna go with another sound option, but everything else should plug in just as I mentioned.